it was perfect. It, they, they, it would have been really weird if I did, you know, if she was like complimenting me about something that wouldn't have felt right for me in my life. It needed to be that I messed up and yeah. she noticed. Yeah. <laughs> Very Sam. Yeah. So first and foremost, I mean, the show has had incredible success in the last year since it premiered. Obviously it was one of the first, or the best, excuse me, comedic series premieres for Freeform. 2.4 million viewers, I think, on that first episode. It, the second season now has gone, you know, incredible. You know, tell me about your thoughts approaching the second season. Um, I just really love the, the character and I, I love the little world that we built, so I was really excited to get back into it and see everybody again and, um, and play more. So I feel really, really grateful that we got to go back and do it again. I mean, it's the best part of TV is you, you finish something and you're like, oh, this is really sad, summer camp is over. But with us, we kind of, we get to come back the next summer, so. Yeah, what do you think it is about the series that draws people in as it has? Well, I think that a lot of people uh, either are a Sam or have a Sam in their lives. And, um, and you know, we all sort of, don't see a character like that, especially in the structure of a half hour comedy where it's not this really dark, heavy thing that you sort of have to wade through. Right. Um, we try to make it light and fun and joyful um, because recovery is joyful, Right. ultimately. Um, so I think, I think that's what people like about it. I think they see someone they care about or themselves in it. For sure. Yeah. Well, in this second season, there's a lot of new things for Sam. Mm -hmm. A new job, a new relationship, new living situation. Um, as you told me about the premiere, uh, new sneakers. New um, sneakers. Yeah, big big stuff. I stole them. I'm wearing them right now. <laughs> oh my god, you did! <laughs> <laughs> um, what was your um, sort of first thoughts receiving this script for, for this upcoming season? I was really excited because I loved the idea of, of starting in this really amazing place for her where she thinks, you know, I have all this time, um, you know, in the program. I, it's my birthday. I have this new job. Everything's going really well. I thought that was a really great place to start. It was yeah. The complete opposite of where we started in the first season. Right. Um, because of course we know, as uh, consumers of television, what that means. It means it's all downhill from here. Yep. Um, and she does. This is a comedy, and she does sort of find her way and come back. A lot of cameos this season. Mm. We have Molly Ringwald as your aunt. Yeah. We have Busy Phillips as your new sponsor. Any onset stories of working with those those two giants? I mean, they're first of all adorable together. Yeah. I mean, the, the second Molly walked in, they just kind of hugged and immediately looked like they were teenagers again to me. It was very very sweet and yeah. loving um, that these two incredible actresses have remained friends for so long. Yeah, um, and they. Yeah, they just have this really, which I think shows on screen, they have this shared history that is really powerful and you can't fake. Um, and Molly was so funny and yeah. just came in and made me laugh so hard. And she kind of gave me shit for, I'm from Jersey originally and obviously Sam is from Boston and uh, her accent only really comes out when she's drunk. But in the episode when Molly came, I was it was a flashback, I was drunk yeah. and um, and so I was, you know, doing sort of my dialect stuff. And I, after a few takes, Molly pulled me aside and was like, I think you've been saying aunt, which is what I, from Jersey, you would say aunt. She was yeah. like, um, that's not really a Boston thing. I think it's aunt. And then we basically learned that it was way too late for me to change it. Ooh. <laughs> Molly, <Okay. laughs> Molly completely <laughs> put me on blast. Yeah, she dropped the ball on she, that she, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she needed, she needed no. to come in sooner. But I, I was the one that, truly fucked up and Molly was trying to have my back in up. But yeah, that's that was my, I was like, I called my husband at the end of the day, I was like, uh, I did something really embarrassing and Molly was the only one that noticed, which is exactly what I was hoping would happen wow. today. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible though, I yeah. love that story. Yeah. I love that you have that. Yeah, I had a great, it was great. So obviously we see a lot of trials and tribulations again with uh, Sam and Carol. Mm -hmm. um, that's their relationship and their back and forth is really the heart of the show, I think, and so fun to watch for me as a viewer. At the end, like we see a like hopeful, sort of optimistic end for the two of them. Mm -hmm. How long is that gonna last in season three? What so, do you see for them? So good question. I would, Im I would imagine that you know, because um, they sort of end in a, a better place at the end of season one. And that is true. And then it's a little bit back and forth, back and forth. And I think that's kind of just the nature of a mother daughter relationship, yep. especially one as fraught and complicated as theirs. Yep. Um, 
So I, I do think they've sort of like, as young people say, I think new level unlocked, or they say something like that, right? <laughs> young people say, um, I don't know, young person. New, I'm not as young as you think I am. New, they've reached a new level together. Okay. And so I think they'll be starting from that place and hopefully won't go down below that. But I would imagine even within that, there's gonna be some back and forth, cause it's them. And yeah. It's, yeah, they're horrible communicators with each other, they just are. So we published an essay recently um, on Jezebel about about, um, sober female characters in yeah. storytelling and how narratively like we sort of love as viewers to see these messy um, female characters and that's super captivating for us and we don't really see a character like Sam who is taking the steps to be sober and sticking to it I, and it sort of begs the question like are sober women narratively boring mm -hmm. uh, are we drawn to them I just wondered if you had any thoughts on that you know after you know two seasons now under under the belt yeah, I think it's funny. I, th I sort of feel like we've, we've been testing the boundaries of, of female lead female characters in television of, well, first they were kind of in this one box of the wife and, and the moral compass of the show and uh, always doing the right thing, which is not human. Right. And then like kind of the pendulum swings and then everyone's like, in a, this is fake, I'm making this up, but like in a leather jacket on a motorcycle, like smoking a cigarette, drinking Jack Daniels, and it's like, but I'm crazy. And yeah. it's like way too messy <laughs> in the other direction. And I think that's not really human either. Yeah. And and so what I hope for the show and for sort of TV characters in general uh, is that we, we get to be sort of in the gray area oh. where most human beings actually live. And I think that's Sam, you know, she's, she is sober and she's recovered and or recovering and um, she's doing the best she's ever done in her life and she's she is getting healthier but she's also a flawed human being and uh, you know is struggling with her relationships and becoming an adult and responsibility and all of those things that a lot of us struggle with even when you are healthy and doing okay so I I, I hope that like. It is entertaining because it's relatable. Um, that's personally what I'm drawn to most yeah. often. So I, I think that we're finding sort of where like the truth lies, because because guys get to do all, all everything all, all the over things. the map. Yeah.